As a product photographer, what equipment should you be buying? My name is Max Bridge, and in the next five minutes, I'm gonna tell you what gear you really need, and I'm gonna say where the best place to spend your money is. What's happening, guys? In my opinion, light modifiers and grip equipment is easily the most important place that you can spend your money. Why? Well, Generally speaking, products are a lot smaller than a person. Most of the time, you're photographing things which are maybe this size or perhaps the size of a watch. You guys have seen me photograph watches quite a lot. Um, and we need to accentuate every single characteristic of that product. And those might be very, very small things that we need to light and make look good. So to do so, we have to modify a light in lots and lots of creative ways. Even though I think lighting grip equipment is the most important thing you can spend your money on, I obviously recognize that you do need cameras, lenses, and lighting. So what is the bare minimum? All right, bare minimum camera, I'm saying 20 megapixels, interchangeable lenses, you can tether it to a computer, and it has a hot shoe mount. If it has those things, then you're gonna be able to shoot most things. So that covers quite a lot of cameras, especially very old ones which you can get very cheap. Lenses, I think you need at least a 100mm macro. That's a good focal length for a macro. Um, I don't care if you get the Canon version, the Nikon version, Tamron, Sigma. You're going to be shooting at something like f8 or even beyond that, and it's not going to make a massive difference what brand you get. Um, there will obviously be better ones. People might shout at me for saying that, but generally they're only going to be noticed by people who zoom in really far and pixel peep every detail, which your clients aren't going to do. Um, so, other than lenses and cameras, we have the lights. Now, this is a Profoto D2. It's a £1,300 light. It's pretty expensive. Um, in terms of what you actually need, though, you want to have a light that has a modelling light, so you can see where you're shining the light, and you want to have it to be quite colour consistent. You don't want a light where you're going to fire it a couple of times, have a few lights firing, and they're going to be very different colours. So, what I would say is plus or minus 200 Kelvin, have a look in the specifications of your light for that, and have a modelling light. That covers almost every light there is on the market, except for some of the really cheap ones you get from foreign countries. Um, you could even use speed lights. Annoying thing is, that is about a speed light is it doesn't have a modeling light. Um, that's about it. So that is our bare minimum kit. Now I'm gonna take you through five of my favorite pieces of lighting and grip equipment. The first piece of lighting grip equipment that I'm gonna show you today is this. Now, everything is gonna be in the description below, so don't worry about noting anything down. Um, this is a roll of Trace. Specifically, it's Lee 129, um, and Trace is basically just like a big roll of paper. It's a little bit thicker than paper, uh, and it's slightly translucent. Now, what you can do with it is you can roll the Trace out, and then you pop your light behind it. If you had your light far away, you'd have a really big soft source. If you had light, your light very close, it'd be quite a small hard source. You can then have different modifiers on your light and create different effects on the trace, which can then be reflected in your product if it's a reflective product, um, or you can do all kinds of different effects. It's really, really useful, um, but it's very important. Make sure you get one that's quite thick. Um, there's one in America called Savage Transloom. That, from what I hear, is very good. This is Lee 129. Um, make sure you get that version of the Lee trace because it is, in my opinion, the best. So what else you can do with trace? Um, this is a trace frame. This is a massive behemoth four foot by four foot trace frame. Um, you can see it's got the trace in the middle which I've just taped to it. It's basically just an aluminium frame which allows you to then give this kind of rigid surface for you to be able to put your trace wherever you want. Um, you can get them in three foot by three foot versions or two foot by two foot versions and put them in any orientation you want around your set. To do so, you would use a knuckle, which is this here, and moves us on to our next piece of equipment. So this is a C-stand. On top of the C-stand, we have a knuckle, and attached to the knuckle is an extension arm. So this is an extension arm here. It's this long piece of metal with a knuckle permanently attached to the end of it. If you wanted to, you could attach the knuckle to the C-stand and get rid of this knuckle, um, and then just have the extension arm going out. And I do that all the time. If I'm putting trace onto these extension arms, I'll do that. Um, but it's quite nice to have the knuckle here because then it allows you to use this end of the extension arm as a clamp. Um, you could put a mirror into there. You know, you just loosen that, clamp it into here, tighten it up, put a mirror in there, a piece of acrylic in there. Um, you can even, these are strong enough to hold that, um, which is fantastic. You can put that in there and then boom it out over your set and really, really great. So other things you can do with this, they're strong enough to put a light on the end. Um, you can also, using a super clamp, 
you could clamp on large pieces of acrylic. Um, you might have seen me doing that in a video quite recently. Um, it was about photographing bottles. Um, and yeah, so extension arms are fantastic. I use them all the time and I really love using them. Um, next, we have a magic arm. Magic arms are fantastic. This is a variable friction magic arm. And as you can see, you can move it in any way that you want. <laughs> um, you can pop on the end here. You could pop a light on the end here. These can hold up to something like five kilograms. Um, so I've put a light with a small modifier on the end and then you can position that where you want. If you haven't got the space to put an extra light stand, you could like super clamp it to an existing stand you have on your set. And then you have another place to put a light, which is really, really useful. Um, you could also use a super clamp like this, pop that on the end, and then you have another place to clamp things like mirrors, piece of acrylic, everything we did here, you can do that here as well. Now lastly, we have a reflector and a grid. So the reflector on its own is just gonna stop your light spilling out too much, gonna focus it a little bit and control it. You can also pop a little bit of trace onto the front of the reflector, which is just gonna help diffuse it and stop it having any kind of a hot spot. Makes it really nice and even, and then you could put that very close to the trace and create a nice gradient down it. Really, really useful. And finally, we have this grid. This is a 10 degree grid, which you can pop inside your reflector, and then it really focuses the light into a very, very small pool of light, which can be extremely useful in loads of ways. So those are my five favorite pieces of lighting and grip equipment. There are so many others out there, but those are five of my favorite. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. Uh, and if you wanna see more from me, make sure you hit subscribe. All right guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.